Hi class and welcome to week 13, lab 13. Um, this will be on senses and sensory organs and I pulled up the lab guide first uh, to take you through. Basically the lab guide is going to tell you um, to use your lecture text and notes. Um, it'll have us perform some vision tests, but it will give us, your worksheet will give you a little bit extra help with those vision tests. Um, so the lab guide I'm going through now because it doesn't include um, too much specific information because the worksheet should take you through everything. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to your worksheet. Um, this is kind of an in-depth lab and it asks you to perform a lot of these tests the best you can. And if you have a sibling or a friend that can help you, that's even better. Um, but the special senses are a part of your nervous system and we'll be going over sensory organs like the ear and the eye and testing these senses. So the first part is to identify the following structures of the eye that I'm going to highlight right here. You can use your lecture notes or other appropriate resources. You can also view the dissection of the cow eye that helps you become a little more familiar with eye structures. But this is the eye that you'll label those following structures for. And then you'll be doing vision tests and you can look at the smell and eye chart for this test. You'll cover one eye and read the smallest letter that you can, and you'll continue reading, and then you'll record that as your vision um, for each eye, and then you'll uncover um, both eyes to read the smallest uh, line that you can on that chart. And this is the Snell and Test chart, and you can pull it up here. You'll hold it 10 feet away, um, and you'll have to print it out or just do your best, you know, hold your computer screen 10 feet away to read as far as you can. And then the lowest, the, the smallest line that you can read, that will give you your vision and the vision will be right next to it. Um, so if you can read the lowest line, that means you have 20, 20 vision. Um, if you can only read kind of maybe up to line five, you'll put down 20, 50 vision and so forth. Let's go back to the worksheet. So you'll do that for the right eye. So you'll cover up the left eye, record what your right eye can see, and you'll do vice versa. The point of vision has to do um, with measuring the distance at which um, a pencil appears um, in kind of your, you'll, you'll kind of in your periphery, but I'll explain. So you'll close one eye and then you'll hold a pencil at arm's length and slowly bring the pencil toward your eye and you'll have a partner measure the distance at which the pencil first appears blurred. So you're going to take a pencil and point it directly towards your eye. And as soon as it starts to get blurry, that distance away, you'll have someone measure in centimeters at the point at which the pencil first starts to get blurry. And you'll do it with your right and your left eye. The pupillary reflex, you'll find an area of dim light. And after one minute of staying in that darkened environment, you'll have a, the partner measure your pupil diameter. And there's a pupil size gauge on the last page. And then you'll have your partner use a light source such as a pen or a flashlight or a flashlight from your phone to shine a light in your eye for about three seconds. And you'll notice how the pupil should decrease in length in size um, and measure that. So let's go down to the pupil size chart as shown here on one of the last pages. So you can kind of measure your um, partner's pupil size by using this chart. Probably in dim light, they should, their pupil should have dilated. It might be a six, seven, eight, or nine. And then after shining a bright light in their eye, it should be down to maybe a two, maybe a one or a three. So that's measuring the size of the pupils in both the right and the left eye. Um, so now what is next? Um, binocular, you'll use your right hand to hold a cardboard tube or an empty paper towel roll or really anything. Um, you'll hold your left hand palm facing you about 10 centimeters from your left eye touching the tube and with both eyes open you'll describe what you see. And this is a really neat experiment. So you're going to take an empty cardboard tube and hold it against your right eye and then hold your left hand palm facing you about 10 centimeters from your left eye touching the tube and you'll look through and you'll notice what you see. Um, a little disclaimer, you should see a hole going through your left hand because your eye fields are taking in both things that they see and putting them together. So your right eye field takes into the fact that it sees a hole and um, your left eye field takes into the fact that it sees the palm of your hand. 
But when your eyes put them together, what you see is well, actually you'll see a hole through your hand. Um, so that's kind of a neat experiment to do that. So describe what you see with both eyes open. Color blindness, you're just going to see if you're normal or abnormal for color blindness. Um, and don't be upset if you might be colorblind. So you're just going to record your results as being normal or abnormal. I've had many students who found out they were colorblind during a lab experiment. But you can um, Google search these colorblind charts. Um, for this example of the chart, everyone can e easily distinguish the orange circle. But people with a red-green colorblindness will have difficulty identifying the red star. So this will tell you if you're red-green colorblind. Um, if you're unable to identify the red star. So you would put abnormal for that. And I think that gets us through the eye sensory tests. Um, then we go to hearing. So the first thing is to kind of use your lecture notes to list the three regions of the um, ear. Um, the ear has two functions, so you'll list those. And then you'll use um, this following kind of list of terms to label the structures within the external inner and middle ear as shown there and the structures are listed for you there. Then you'll have some hearing tests. Um, again, you might need a park partner for this to so do the best you can. You'll use a quiet area. You should be seated, have both your eyes closed, have a partner snap their fingers at various points around their head about one around your head about one foot away. And after each snap, you as the person being evaluated, need to point to where they were snapping and record the locations where your lab partner was accurate and locations where they were inaccurate and pinpointing the exact location of the sound. Um, so the location of a snap, you could put to the right of the right ear, to the left of the left ear, top of the head, um, lower left, lower right, and just place it there accurate or inaccurate if your partner was able to hear you snap. So as you're writing down your um, you know, and you can use a sibling, a family member. Um, if you for somehow need to use yourself, you can use yourself. Um, so just do the best you can for this. Auditory acuity, or you'll carefully plug the opening to your auditory canal with cotton. Don't insert anything in because you don't want to perforate your tympanic membrane, your eardrum. And you'll sit quietly with your eyes closed and have your partner hold a watch or ticking clock to your unpacked ear. Your partner or we'll slowly move the clock away from the ear until you indicate that you can't hear it anymore. And you'll record that distance in which the ticking um, went away is inaudible. And you'll complete the same steps for the opposite ear. Again, measuring in centimeters. Um, taste perception, and this might involve you finding something in your house. Have you ever noticed that when you have a cold that things don't taste right? And that's because the inflammation and obstruction of your nasal cavity um, can impair the sense of smell. And the flavor of food is produced when taste is combined with smell. So a stuffy nose can impair the sense of smell. Perform the following experiment to determine how your sense of taste is affected by smell. Um, if you have two hard candies, you can use butterscotch and mint, place them in front of you um, and use another food item if you can't have or don't want to use candy. Pinch your nose and close your eyes so you can't tell what candy you'll be tasting and place the candy on your mouth. Let it remain there. Take the candy off your tongue and guess what flavor it is. Rinse the water between tastes. Um, try again with the second candy. Repeat your eyes still closed, but at this time, don't pinch your nose. So it's just we're trying to see if any obstruction in your nose by pinching it will affect your sense of taste. So you can use anything for this. You can eat a chip, something salty. Um, a piece of chocolate, something sweet, to just see if obstructing the nose when you pinch it will affect your sense of taste. Stimulating the taste buds with a paper towel, dry the surface of your tongue and then place some sugar on your tongue. Do not close your mouth. And how much time, so count the time, uh, how much time does it take for your taste for you to be able to taste the sugar? So you'll dry off your tongue to make it nice and kind of dry. And then you'll put a little sugar on um, to see how much time it takes for you to taste the sugar again. So you'll measure that time in seconds. And then you'll kind of have to answer this question why you couldn't taste the sugar immediately. Um, and that's usually because the saliva that needs to form on your tongue actually helps to dissolve the sugar to help you taste it. So the reason why you can't taste the sugar immediately is because in a dry mouth with no saliva, that's not helping you 
um, taste of that sugar. Smell perception, again, you'll have to use whatever you have. Um, have you ever noticed that when you enter a room, you might smell something strongly, but after a few minutes, you notice the smell or find it to be less intense? And if someone new enters the room, they may comment on the scent that you detected before, but you no longer smell it. And that's because you, you have sensors in the sense of smell that can adapt. So if there's a strong sense of smell, your sensors will eventually adapt to that sense and not be able to smell it anymore, whereas someone entering the room would be able to smell it right away. So you'll use a paper cup, um, try to find a sample of a strong smelling substance like cotton ball soaked in perfume, a chocolate and a lemon or orange peel, pine needles, garlic, onion, vanilla, coffee, vinegar. Um, even if you wanna just take a couple of those and then take a good sniff, remain near the source for five to 10 minutes, rate the smell intensity at the initial exposure from one to 10, where one is not intense, 10 is very intense, after five to 10 minutes, rate the smell intensity um, of between one to 10, and then leave the room to get some fresh air and come back to try to rate the intensity of that smell again. And again, you can use any scent that you have available to you, something strong, you know, lemon, orange, garlic, uh, or some perfume to rate your smell intensity to show you that after a while, your adapters for smell will go away so you won't smell it anymore, but then when you come back into the room, when your adapters are fresh again, um, you will be able to smell it. And then you'll compare the first and second exposure. Um, and then for touch, there's some fun experiments to do with touch. You can obtain a small bristle, like from your hairbrush or um, even just a small feather and use a pen or a pencil to draw just a two centimeter square on the anterior side of your forearm. So you'll put, um, kind of a two centimeter square right on your forearm, close your eyes and have someone else touch 20 evenly spaced within that square and tell your partner each time you detect a touch and you will record the number of touches that you detected. Um, so this is just showing like how many um, sensory receptors are in this square. And you know, someone will touch within that square 20 times and you have to record how many times you felt the touch uh, to determine how many sensory receptors you have in that square to be able to feel the touch. The localization of touch, you'll close your eyes, you'll have your partner touch the palm of your hand with the tip of the pen with your eyes closed, and then you'll try to place the tip of the pen on the exact spot that was touched. And then you'll measure in millimeters the distance between the two spots. So let's say that when your eyes are closed, someone else will touch the palm of your hand here and then you will try to um, reiterate or touch the same spot that was just touched by your partner. And then you'll just measure in distance the, the change in space. And then you'll repeat the procedure for the back of your hand, the fingertip, and then the anterior forearm. And what this experiment is just showing you, and again, if you do this the best you can, if you don't have a partner, or again, try to get a family member to do this with you. What this is showing you is that in various parts of the body, you have a different number of sensory receptors. So, you know, touching it on your fingertip, your fingers have lots of sensory receptors. So when your partner touches your fingertip with a pen, it will probably be very easy for you to touch the exact same location because you have so many sensory receptors in your fingers. The anterior forearm is going to be more difficult because you have less sensory receptors in your forearm. So where your partner touches, you probably won't be able to touch the exact same spot um, with your eyes closed. So you'll measure the distance between the partner pinpoint and your pinpoint um, to kind of show that there's more, wherever there's more sensory receptors, like in your finger fingertips, it'll be much easier to pinpoint that exact same spot. For the two-point threshold, you'll need toothpicks. You must have your eyes closed. You'll start with your fingertip and a gap of about one millimeter between the tips of the two toothpicks. And your partner will gently place the tips of the toothpicks to the skin a second time and leave them in contact with your skin for about two seconds. And you'll tell your partner whether you feel one point or two points, and then your partner will proceed to touch the same spot, but taking the toothpicks apart. And what this is showing, this is called a tooth point threshold test. If you have two toothpicks that are very close to each other, so maybe one milliliter apart, um, it might just feel like one point when it touches your skin, 
but as they get farther, so wider apart, it'll start to feel like two points. And again, what this is showing you that in an area, for example, your fingertip or the back of your hand, you might have more sensory receptors. So the areas of the body where you have more sensory receptors like your fingertips, it'll be much easier to feel the two kind of touches from the toothpicks because each kind of area has a sensory receptor that can feel that even if they're extremely close together. So that's the two point threshold test. And you're going to continue it um, with your different fingers, the back of the hand, the posterior upper arm, especially in the upper arm, the posterior arm, kind of your shoulder, you don't have any sensory receptors. So when you put two toothpicks and you touch the back of your shoulder with two toothpicks, and again, try to have a partner do this, it's going to feel like one point, even though there's two toothpicks touching you. As they get farther apart though, they will reach more sensory receptors. So you'll start to feel the two separate um, touches from the two toothpicks. All right, sensory adaptation. This is a fun one as well. You'll obtain a container with water that's room temperature, one that's warmer than room temperature, but not boiling. I don't want you to burn yourself. And a third one that is cold or ice water. You'll place one hand in the cold water and one hand in the warm water. And you record your initial perception on the temperature of a scale of one to 10. You'll wait two minutes and then you record your perceptions at the end of this time. If it's too painful, do not keep your hand in either or. So this is gonna be kind of a mind trick because one hand will feel warm and one hand will feel cold. And you need to kind of write your observations about what you feel when they're both in at the same time initially after two minutes and after immersion in the room temperature water. Did the two hands feel the same when placed in room temperature water? Why or why not? Um, out of all the experiments to do, this is an interesting one to do yourself. So see if you can get through that one. And then these are the supplemental images to help you um, complete the lab, the pupillary reflex, the pupil size guide. Oh, the demonstration of the blind spot. I must've missed that one. So I'm gonna go back to that one and then the color blind chart. So the demonstration of the blind spot, you'll be using this chart. I'm gonna go back up, I can't believe I missed that one. There's a lot of fun things to do in this one. The demonstration of the blind spot is up here. So you'll obtain that blind spot test paper with the um, kind of the, uh, the T-shaped shape on one side and the circle on the other side. You'll hold the paper um, about 50 centimeters away from your face with your noise pointing between the plus sign and the black dot. You will close or cover your left eye. And with your right eye, you'll look at the plus. You'll very slowly bring the paper towards you and you'll record the distance at which the plus sign disappears. And this is to show you uh, the blind spot in your eye. If an image gets sent to the blind spot on the eye um, where you have no photoreceptors, it'll disappear from your sight. So that's the demonstration of the blind spot. So let me know if you guys have questions with this. Um, have fun with it. Do it the best you can with a partner or a family member. Um, and I will see you guys next week. You have your quiz due this Sunday as well as this worksheet. We just have a couple um, labs left before the end of the semester. You just have a final cumulative lab exam, which will include a lot of multiple choice questions from previous quizzes. Um, but other than that, keep up the great work, guys. And we'll see you next week.